returns to a tropical setting with its sixth mainline entry, upgrading the venerable Dunya engine with new features and increasing fidelity and performance with support for the latest generation of consoles. In today's video, I will be covering the current generation versions of this game with the PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series consoles, as well as looking at that PC version, generating optimized settings based upon what the consoles are running. A lot to cover here, including general performance on console and PC, so let's get right to it, asking the first question of, how is Far Cry 6 graphically? Dunya Engine has been in use since Far Cry 2 quite a long time ago and has seen many iterations and additions over time. But the core technological impetus behind the engine is the same. Render an open world with all that terrain and foliage as best as possible. So what have they added this time around to enhance that mission statement? The first thing you might notice are new skies, which are rendered with volumetric clouds and a more realistic color tone and scattering around sunset and sundown. These new clouds generally add a lot to the game's visuals in comparison to Far Cry games of the past, but their limitations in being real-time are readily apparent when you move the camera, as they start to break down and show their internal noise and low-res nature. It's a compromise for sure, but given how the game is targeting 60 FPS on these newer platforms, it makes a good deal of sense. Another smaller introduced graphical element is new water rendering, including waves and a bit of water deformation. It helps sell off the island setting of the game, but if you do look up close, it will break down a bit. Beyond this, a returning graphical element takes center stage now on the island of Yara, and that is fire propagation. Previous games were decried that they had been removing destruction simulation and fire propagation in the past, so fans of the series will be happy to learn that fire spreads generously around the environments of FC6, and mayhem and destruction are more readily obvious than in previous games. The game world does feel more physically interactive than in other more recent entries. The biggest graphical enhancement to Dunya in Far Cry 6, though, is the inclusion of hardware ray tracing in the PC version of the game. This includes ray traced shadows and ray traced reflections. How much they add to the presentation depends, though. Honestly, I think ray traced shadows are a bit of a question mark in how much they add to this game's visuals. First, RT shadows only affect sun shadows, so all indoor or artificial shadows are just done via classic shadow maps. On top of this, Shadows cast by vegetation or alpha masks transparencies are just done via shadow maps mixed in over RT shadows. So the biggest source of shadowing in the game, all of the vegetation, all the trees and grass and whatnot, are just standard shadow maps with screen space shadows. And that has all those issues that that may entail. Like here you can see me moving backwards and forwards, looking at the shadow of this palm tree leaf here. Then you can see obvious shadow map cascades and other shadow map issues. Another thing that limits the splendor of these RT shadows is that they seem to be quarter resolution. Now we've seen low res RT shadows before in a game like Modern Warfare 2019, but those were temporally filtered in a really great way. Here the filtering and denoising is comparatively rudimentary, so when you move the camera, RT shadows add a surprising amount of alien or even just sitting still, it's easy to see how these RT shadows are of a low resolution. Lastly, the RT shadows can have some visual strangeness, like you can see here in the character eyes, where they're darkened in an odd way that you really wouldn't expect. RT shadows in Far Cry 6 do enhance the presentation on average, but they're a bit hobbled, and I think the game might have had a better visual presentation if they had used that ray tracing power instead for something like ray traced ambient occlusion, as shadowed areas in Far Cry 6 still have that current gen glow to them, and screen space AO is a bit lackluster there. The other RT effect with ray traced reflections is thankfully better. RT reflections enhance the realism of many surfaces in the game, like this fridge here where the metal is not just a dull single tone gray, but you can see the environment around that metal reflected. Other artificial surfaces like those on retro cars are greatly benefited as well, like here where the SSR and cube maps leave the car looking very video gaming on the left, while ray traced reflections definitely enhance the realism. There's usual things that ray traced reflections allow, like the ability to see your first person character at times, which increases the game's immersion. RT reflections also greatly enhance the visuals during and after a rain, and it rains a lot on Yara. Screen space reflections miss out a lot of reflection detail here, and often you'll just see the 
blue sky, looking oddly at most view angles. Ray tracing though, that looks quite a bit better. And in the heat of the action, RT reflections also include particle effects like fire, which is nice and definitely not always expected. Ray trace reflections are definitely an upgrade over the game's base screen space reflections, but at the same time, I think their quality is being held back a bit on PC. For example, RT reflections do not apply to water surfaces. Oceans, streams, and ponds just use SSR, and when these take up big portions of the screen, which happens often on an island, cannot look too great. RT reflections also do not affect transparent surfaces, like glass, so car bodies can look nice, but their windshields look rather old hat. The biggest issue with RT reflections though is that they're of a low resolution. They appear to be quarter resolution and they can look rather grainy. You can often just see the big pixels of the RT reflections and all that aliasing that it causes. And for some reason the PC version does not have a setting to increase the resolution like you may find in other games. The quarter res nature and them mixing with screen space reflections can also leave some weird blue halos around objects at times that I don't really think looks too awesome. There are other other issues with these reflections, but in general, I just really wish you could turn up the quality higher than the default. That brings me to a related aspect of Far Cry 6's graphics. There are a lot of quarter resolution effects in this game on all versions of the game. Particle effects look to be quarter res, even on PC. Screen space shadows, motion blur, depth of field, and even lens flares all look quarter res. When combined with the TAA, this game can look blurry at the same time as looking surprisingly alias due to all these quarter res things. You may notice this yourself on your platform of choice. Speaking of platform of choice, I've been showing off the PC version here. How does it also look on the latest consoles? PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X target 4K 60fps with dynamic resolution scaling. The game does not seem to be reconstructing up to 4K with some sort of reconstruction technique, I think. If it is, well then it's mixing in with the general hazy soft presentation that makes resolution counting rather unenjoyable, but still I've counted some resolutions here. In a general gameplay view, the PlayStation 5 seems to be around 1728p to 1872p. Xbox Series X in those same views seems to be 1872p to 2160p. For example, here in this fight on PlayStation 5 when looking at this car, I counted 1872p. Attempting to recreate that shot, I counted Xbox Series X here to be a full 4K. In general, when put side by side, Xbox Series X just looks sharper. Now the resolution on both these consoles may dip lower than this, but these are the counts I could get while playing the game. Xbox Series S with its smaller GPU targets smaller resolutions. Here the HUD elements to my eye look 1080p, yet Series S manages on a 4K output to hit resolutions around and above 1080p, anywhere from 1080p to 1224p of what I've counted. It can possibly go lower than that of course, but generally with the TAA in this game and the aforementioned softness I described earlier, the game just looks like 1080p on a 4K display. And that's really obvious when you put it right next to the Series X version. Graphically here, the PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X make intelligent compromises from the PC's ultra settings to obtain their frame rate and performance target. Here I will detail the deviations from ultra settings and using the Xbox Series X version primarily as representative. The consoles look to use the high setting for volumetric fog, which has a blockier look in the fog itself when you catch any of its rays aligning with the camera. The consoles look to use the high setting for shadows, which honestly rather heavily decreases the quality of shadow maps found in the game, making them misalign more often with the world geometry. The consoles look to be using what appears to be the high or medium water quality in the game, which decreases the fidelity of water surfaces, making the lines and undulations on them larger in size. The consoles look to use the high texture filtering setting, which simply decreases the quality of textures the further away they are from the camera. And lastly, the consoles look to be using a setting between medium and high for geometry and vegetation, as can be seen here where Xbox Series X and PlayStation 5 have more geometric complexity on this distant building than medium, but less than high. 
With this variable here, we see the one difference between Xbox Series X and PlayStation 5 I've been able to find, and that is that PlayStation 5's level of detail quality for vegetation specifically is slightly higher than that found on Xbox Series X. As you can see here, looking at the detail of the plants at the distance, you can see the PlayStation 5 has ever so slightly more detailed plants far away. On top of these console optimizations, I recommend performance-minded PC players consider using the high environmental detail setting, which lowers the range of artificial lights in the game world, as well as using the high terrain setting, which minimally decreases the distance of higher detail terrain deformation, like seen in the sand here. One aspect that surprised me when going through all these settings on PC is that the roads in the game generally looked like they had no texture filtering on them, even at the highest settings and when forcing anisotropic filtering in the graphics panel. Oddly, Ubisoft has eliminated the road quality setting from Far Cry 5, which alleviated this issue, and I'm honestly not sure why they did this. Another issue with recommending optimized PC settings is that the main way consoles retain their performance via dynamic resolution is currently not working reliably in my testing on PC. For example, here's the game on an RTX 3090 4K DRS off on the left and dynamic res set to target 60 on the right. Yeah, it's not working. The res stays the same and the performance drops even. Now here's an RTX 2060 Super 4K on the left DXR, optimized settings on the left with dynamic res off, and then dynamic res targeting 60 FPS on the right hand side. And it's actually working and the res is changing. So something is causing dynamic res to not activate on certain configurations and I'm not sure what it is and I hope Ubisoft can fix it. In the end my optimized settings look like this. A few reductions here or there, some detail loss at a distance and on shadows, but generally a presentable game. When added up all together on an RTX 2060 Super at that lowest res bound 1728p that we found on PlayStation 5, we can see that optimized settings can increase performance by 17% or so, or even greater depending on the scene. So I definitely recommend optimized settings for those of you looking for better performance with minimal visual quality loss. Before getting into general performance, there are two things I have to talk about. First is the loading. The game loads rather quickly on all platforms. Going into the menu and loading the exact same Location, Series X, PS5, and a moderately fast PC NVMe load within one second of one another. This is rather quick and nice to see. But what is less nice to see is the viewport stutter I've discovered on Xbox Series consoles and PlayStation 5. Here the game's running fine, but the camera is stuttering. Look at PlayStation 5 as I rotate the camera here, and you should be able to see how the plants or objects, when you concentrate on them, look to stutter. It looks really bad, I think. Same thing on Xbox Series X here when I spin the camera and slow it down to accentuate it even more. That same icky camera stutter that makes it look like the game has a frame rate issue. Curiously, when testing for that same issue on PC with an ancient Xbox 360 pad, I did not encounter the issue, which would have otherwise ruined a lot of my cinematic shots I've used for this video taken on PC. So this is something you should have in mind when looking at which version of the game you want to buy, and something Ubisoft really needs to fix on console. In terms of general performance on console, all the console versions manage to hit 60 FPS really well in average gameplay scenarios and combat. Series S, X, and PlayStation 5 hold up really well there as dynamic res adjusts accordingly to keep the frame rate at the desired 60 FPS. Technically, you can see drops here or there when the camera rapidly pivots or something expensive hits the screen suddenly, accompanied by a frame rate drop and tearing on all these machines, but it's not too common and not a big deal. But what is a big deal, I think, is the traversal stutter frame rate drops that affects all machines and PC. It can happen on foot, like you see here on PlayStation 5, with a frame drop and tearing kicking in. But it most often happens when going through the game world on a car or horse. Check out me going through this area on Xbox Series X. Notice how as I pass through this town and all the level of detail rapidly changes how frame rate drops occur and tearing alongside it. When this happens, it feels less like tearing, honestly, and more like small stutter hitches. Curiously, between the consoles, PlayStation 5 seems to fare worse when doing this exact same test, with more obvious and constant full screen tearing when doing this high speed movement. This is so called Dunya World Traversal Stutter, 
and I complained about it back when Far Cry 5 came out all those years ago, and I'm complaining about it now again all these years later. Now it just happens on all platforms. On PC, well, it's there too, of course, and I honestly think it's even worse here now than it was before, as CPU load is heavier in this game than in the previous ones. Here I'm going through the world at console settings with adaptive sync on, on a beastly Core i9-10900K and RTX 3090, just like the consoles. And there's periodic trips, just like they have, when going through the world that make the game feel very unpolished when driving. And the frame time dips there can be worryingly high. I'm not sure how related it is, but it's pretty easy to see how the game has one thread which is doing a lot more than any others. The only way I could get rid of this stutter on this mega machine was by turning everything to off or low. This issue has plagued the game series since at least Far Cry 4 to my knowledge, and I don't think Ubisoft has any plans to change the engine to prevent this from happening. But now maybe they shall actually consider doing something about it considering it affects all the current gen platforms and PC. Getting over to some PC specific metrics, the ray tracing performance hit on PC is very mild, just adding 3.4 milliseconds of rendering time on the RX 6800 XT at 4K and only 2.5 milliseconds of rendering time on the RTX 3080 at 4K. Really cheap, but it makes sense given the quality concessions that the ray tracing has. When running the game at these settings and doing a run through the area I mentioned earlier, the RTX 3080 performed on average 9.5% better, sticking closer to 60fps more often, and curiously having less general open world traversal stutter on that frame time graph than I can see on the RX 6800 XT. And I actually didn't expect that. But that's not the complete story, as Far Cry 6 ships with a high-res texture pack that is enabled in this test. According to release materials, 11 gigabytes of video memory are required for 4K with these textures. And while running this test, the 6800 XT with 16 gigabytes of VRAM reflected that, showing 11.7 gigs of VRAM being used at its highest during this test. Surely this should mean that the RTX 3080 should be having issues, but it's not so straightforward. After finishing this test on the RX 6800 XT, if I look at textures at the finish line, they look nice and high res. At the finish line on the RTX 3080, the textures actually never ended up loading in, showing lower res mip maps. Normally I would say the 3080's VRAM just cannot cut it, but I've measured something going on here that I find noteworthy. On the RTX 3080, the VRAM usage never goes higher in this test than 8.7 gigabytes, not getting close to its full 10.240 gigabytes that it has access to. And doing that same test without DirectX ray tracing on the 3080 still has the textures never load in, even though the highest allocated amount of VRAM being used during the test is 7.9 gigabytes. From what I can see with the information available to me, it seems like the game is not properly allocating VRAM usage on the RTX 3080. But the end results speak for themselves, and currently if you want to use that HD texture pack, you're going to have to turn down your output resolution on GPUs with less than 10 gigabytes of memory. And with that being said, I come to my last point about this game's visual presentation on all machines, and that is that cutscenes are animated at 30 FPS. I usually don't like this, but what makes it more jarring is that not everything is consistent. Some aspects in these cutscenes are actually still running at 60 FPS, like particle effects and other things. And sometimes the animation frame pacing is not correct, making the presentation look very jittery. I'm not sure why Ubisoft made the animations this way, but the game's presentation suffers as a result. Getting to the end of this video, I like the general visual upgrades brought into Far Cry 6, and the performance can be pretty great, but I'm less than happy about other aspects here. The Dunya Traversal Stutter is there on all platforms now, and it's disappointing to see considering it's been in the engine since Far Cry 4. On PC, the ray tracing edition is nice, but the RT is strangely limited and of low quality. As I see it, every game with ray tracing should have options for high quality RT, as well as options for high performance RT. A single toggle just does not suffice anymore. Anymore. But that is all I have to say for now. If you did like this video, please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. If you're already a subscriber, hit that little bell in the corner to be informed as soon as Digital Foundry posts a video. If you want to help us out, support DF on Patreon to get years of our content in high quality for download. If you want to talk to me about Far Cry 6, write a comment below or follow me and DF on Twitter. And as always, this is Alex, bidding you farewell and auf Wiedersehen.